All right, well, welcome, everyone. Uh, how was everyone doing? Pretty good. Good? Good. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, um, thank you for coming, and I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your evening to be here with us, and um, we really appreciate you. We are B Plus Detroit, and we'll do introductions um, shortly, but uh, first, you know, awesome um, that you're able to engage in this conversation of pollinator conscious nutrition, um, which is uh, one of the workshop topics uh, we have implemented uh, for a virtual workshop. Um, so community members can engage with us um, online and be able to have um, some sort of participation in our efforts to uh, support environmental justice and saving the bees and environmental health, all of those wonderful things that we'll actually talk about um, in this presentation. So thank you for coming. B Plus Detroit. So who are we? And um, we are a nonprofit organiza organization that fosters education on the importance of bees within the community and their impact on the public health of Detroit. Now, I'm not going to read all that. I want you to look at it for yourself, but I just wanted to highlight some of the key words um, that are mentioned in this mission, state of, mission statement of ours. And so um, the first one is B plus Detroit. And uh, our name has a special significance and it holds a, a really sentimental value of sort of our growth and development into who we've become today. Um, it, it took a, 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 you know, some time and um, a lot of pivoting and, and sifting around on how do we kind of morph this idea of, you know, how to support our community in a public health way, but also um, really being able to provide some substantive growth for the biodiversity out there. And it was all based upon our love for living things. So we call that biophilia and um, B plus Detroit is, really means we're focusing on the bees, but plus all the other wonderful things that come um, about focusing on bees and providing um, spaces for the bees to grow and flourish. Other part of that is the education. Um, education is one of our three pillars of this organization. Um, the three pillars are educate, build, sustain. And education is the way we're using health promotion and promoting about these ideas of environmental science and agriculture. Um, in various formats to engage various populations of the community um, from, you know, younglings and engaging uh, children at the school level all the way up to, uh, you know, college students and beyond. And so uh, we're very fortunate as a group of uh, Wayne State University college students that we can be able to uh, bring in that student population on these matters and get them involved. Um, and, and a lot of these students have already have uh, ambitions of their own about um, environmental justice. And so uh, what we're also trying to do is provide a space of unity and collectiveness where a lot of these organizations and efforts uh, within Wayne State University in Detroit um, can be linked together because we are all supporting the same mission of environmental growth. And so um, the next point of that is the bees. And so, like I said, our focus is the bees and providing bees a, a safe housing unit to be able to flourish. And so um, saving the bees means saving us. And we'll talk a little bit more about the mechanics of that. Uh, other portion we men mentioned was community. Uh, like I said, this is a, an effort where you can't do it alone. And togetherness is what's gonna drive uh, being able to accomplish great things um, in this field. And so uh, with the gathered efforts of our volunteers, support we've gained from the university um, and all across the board, uh, this is what's gonna take us far in being able to empower others to do the same. Public health. Uh, public health is really um, the core basis as far as the foundation of this organization. Um, and we're funneling that through something that we call environmental health. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the presentation as, as well. Uh, but public health really centralizes around the idea of looking at all the external factors of an individual's health and how those culmination of things really predicts the life course and um, the healthiness of an individual in an overall community and how some of those things really coincide and are really linked together. In Detroit, um, Detroit is where we're housed and we have a specific attention to Detroit because a lot of what we're talking about uh, is really Detroit specific. And um, we're appreciative of the mission that we have in Detroit and all the other missions 
regarding that because Detroit is really big on urban agriculture and it's an up and growing mission um, and initiative that is happening in Detroit. And we're thankful to be able to join those efforts. Uh, a second part of the pillar is build. Uh, what we do, we build these urban bee farms and these spaces for bees to grow and thrive. And so uh, that's really one of big parts of our community engagement, how we um, gather individuals to be able to come in our space and really see what it's like to engage um, with some of the um, wild you know, plant life and you know the bees. And then um, part of the third uh, pillar is sustainment. And so really through promoting agricultural growth and biodiversity is how we're sustaining these. We want um, this mission to be something of continuity where it's long-term. And so being able to provide these long-term solutions of agricultural growth and biodiversity is how we'll achieve that. So meet the team. <laughs> this is us, we're all here. And um, I, I can honestly say I'm really proud of these individuals here. We are uh, a really diverse bunch um, and we really mesh well. And that's really all what I could have asked for in developing this mission. And so, um, I, you know, we, we've come together and created something really special out of this team and this organization, really giving it a new meaning. And that's what it was about, really elevating uh, what we had to bring to the table and um, how our different strengths and weaknesses really coincide with each other to really um, create the heart of B Plus Detroit. So shout out to you all. So we'll just kind of um, go down the line here and, and give some introduction. So you all have met me. My name is Kamali Klor. I'm the founder and CEO of B Plus Detroit. Jack, if you want to go. Yeah, I can go. Um, my name is Jack Spurlock. I am a senior and I'm the VP of B Plus Detroit. Um, and I kind of joined when Kamali brought this idea to me um, about just ensuring pollinator health as well as ensuring the health of our community and even expanding outside of that. So I was really on board with that. Um, yeah, it's me. Fifi? Sure. So my name is Afifi Kadaru, and um, I'm a second year nursing student here at Wayne State, and I'm also studying public health, um, my position. So I am the director of public relations, and I got involved because I've always been a huge bee advocate. So then me and Kamali talked about things, and we realized how our morals align. So um, we all came together to push these initiatives. And um, I don't know, I value a lot of, I place a lot of importance on the bee population and so does my team. So just kind of worked from there. Awesome. Elijah? Hi, I'm Elijah. Um, I'm a third year marketing student um, here at Wayne State. I joined B Plus, Kamala came to me back in October last year and I thought it was a great opportunity to like give back to the community and also like save the bees. So I was really interested in that initiative. So yeah, that's why I joined. Mafuz? Hey everyone, my name is Mafuz Hawk. I'm in, kind of in charge of the community affairs aspect of the project. Um, right now I'm actually a recent graduate of Wayne State and I'm working as a case investigator for COVID. Um, the reason why I got involved with B Plus is I'm really interested in continuing to help the Detroit population, the urban population. I want to be a physician also who practices in this community. So I thought it would be a good idea to get involved as much as I could. Just learning how the environment especially plays a role in health. And I think this is the best way to do it and learn from here. Awesome. awesome. Alex? Uh, hi, my name is Alex Potu. Um, I'm a junior at Wayne State, and uh, I got involved with B Plus actually very recently. Um, I was uh, talking to Kamali about it and kind of had some interest. Um, I grew up on a farm and kind of know a little bit about beekeeping just from like other local farmers, um, but I personally have never raised bees. And um, you know, coming to Wayne State, there isn't a lot, lot of uh, agriculture groups uh, on campus. And this was kind of the ones I saw that interested me and um, they're, you know, fighting for a good cause. 
So um, yeah, I took interest in uh, decided to join the team and uh, hopefully uh, get to be uh, more involved as uh, time goes on. Awesome, awesome. And uh, thank you all uh, for some of you who have recently joined us. We're just getting started, uh, but that was some of our team introductions. And uh, like I said, this is a really outstanding group and um, couldn't have done it without them. Kudos to you all, you guys are my rock. So let's continue here. So first we wanna provide a little bit of background of what we're talking about. And I told you that public health was really a sort of uh, a foundational groove uh, for how B plus Detroit has been advancing. And so um, public health is really uh, something that we like to focus on in a lot of our conversations, whether it's in our uh, What Do You Know Wednesday presentations or um, some of the on-site workshops and even in this capacity virtually, uh, because um, this is where the root of our mission lies. And so as a public health major, um, this is one of the things I wanted to highlight within the mission of B plus Detroit. And so for you all to get a gain of understanding of uh, what that means, I just want to provide a, a quick definition. Um, and this one particularly from CA Winslow um, is a great encompassing one um, that you know public health professionals and students um, really look towards when looking at a holistic definition of what public health is. So public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promotional health through the organized efforts and informed choices of society, organizations, public and private communities, and individuals. So just to digest all of that, um, really it's saying that uh, public health involves a lot of the science, you know, really the health and medical um, portions of what health means, but also the art, the art of engaging people, learning their stories, looking at the other external socioeconomic factors, combining that together to create a holistic picture of what health is for a community. And the second part of this is really highlighting that this work can't be done alone. It's community-based and you need efforts from, uh, you're looking at, you know, at home and also community organizations. You're looking at government and the bureaucracies that pass these policies that affect us every day to get involved in these missions to create inclusive solutions for public health. And so this graphic to the right here um, is just a, a wheel of really the core principles of public health and how we go about that mission and, and some of the you know methodologies we use. And a subset of public health is environmental health. And this is where uh, B plus Detroit mainly lies. And so environmental health um, is the science and practice of preventing human injury and illness and promoting well-being um, by these core things here. And so uh, we're talking about identifying and evaluating env environmental sources. So as environmental health um, is a subset of public health, one of the mechanisms of public health is analysis and evaluation. So you're constantly um, surveying and looking at uh, what things could be potential risk and injury for um, not only um, humans in the community, but, but other environmental life. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, the other is the other side of that, the preventative um, and also sometimes reactionary is limiting exposures and how do we go about that? Um, what does that look like physically, chemically, um, biologically through um, the different environmental um, ports like air, water, and soil and food. So all these different things culminate into what it means um, to have environmental health. And environmental health is inextricably linked to human health. And so those things are really tied together. So uh, this is uh, sort of like an icebreaker, um, but it's really just to give you an, a scope of what's really going on here. And so how many of you, uh, you can shout out or raise your hand, but how many of you have eaten a breakfast like this before? <laughs> okay. okay. Awesome, yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, um, I have too. And, you know, if I click here, Okay, there goes your orange juice. If I click here, there goes your berries, your blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, right? If I click here, all the walnuts, the almonds, okay? If I click here, steak is gone. Um, if I click here, <laughs> the milk is gone. 
and so so on and so forth. And so that takes us to this point of bees are very important. And so um, what you just saw in that previous slide was really giving you an ideal picture of what it's like if bees were not with us anymore. And so uh, because of that, uh, bees are the single most important species on the planet. And I say that uh, because bees in themselves resp res are responsible for one third of the entire global food supply. And so they do that through the work of pollination. And pollination um, is really the passing off of reproductive um, seeds to other plants. And this will help cross pollination develops in the abundance of wildlife growth. Um, and bees play a portion of that is because bees, um, bees do what they want to do. They live their lives. And um, a lot of how bees get their nutrients is by going to various flowers to collect um, nectar and pollen. Nectar is their source for carbohydrates and pollen is their source for protein. And so what they do, they bring all that back to the hive. Um, and sometimes bees can visit hundreds of flowers in a day, but as they're visiting to go get those nutritious materials, uh, they're passing off various seeds from other plants and taking it um, to uh, you know, various different sites and parts of the community. Uh, and sometimes bees can travel miles to get their food. So they span a large distance. And with that being said, this is how they provide such an abundance of food supply for the entire world. And so they pollinate roughly uh, 150 crop species. And so um, we're talking about from your fruits to vegetables to your nuts, um, some of the things that were mentioned within that breakfast there. Um, and when you saw the steak go, uh, the steak is because bees pollinate alfalfa seeds and which is feed for cattle. And if um, cattle don't feed, we don't get any meat. And so uh, you can see how all of these things are linked and coincide with each other. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we really don't realize that. And so that's why uh, B Plus Detroit is here to give you an insight of how these things work and how they're connected with us. And we'll talk about later of things you can do to be able to help support that mission. Uh, one other thing th bees do is they support biodiversity. I told you about uh, with the cross-pollination developing wild plant life growth because you have different species of plants uh, reproducing with other ones. And so uh, with that abundance of plant life growth, um, you have what we call carbon sequestration. And so, you know, plants, they use carbon dioxide um, through a, a process called photosynthesis, right? And so uh, when carbon sequestration happens, that's because there's an abundance of plant life growth. And so more plants equals less carbon and um, the, you know, up in our airways and the ozone layer, and it's good for um, overall air quality. So that's another way. The other one is economically, bees uh, contribute $20 billion annually in agricultural production. Um, and so um, think about how much that affects the economy, how much um, you use some of these products standard foods um, in your daily household and imagine those things gone. Another th really cool thing is honey. Bees are the only insect that provide food for human consumption and that is honey. And honey in itself has many medicinal properties. And so all of these things come together are linked to the bee and this is what we call externalities. Um, bees have uh, really their sole purpose of just living, but by them living, they provide so many other benefits to the larger ecosystem. And really, we're going to talk about the problem here. Um, you see why bees are so important, but we have to keep them important. And one of the things that um, is really in, in, in dire need is bees, and that's been attributed to many factors, um, like colony collapse disorder, um, you know, man-made climate changes, varroa mites, which are like vampiric ticks that uh, feed on the larvae of the bees, and also the insecticides we use. Um, and so we have to be really cognizant of how we're impacting various other entities in the ecosystem and really reflecting on our parts of how we're adding to the decline of bees. And you can see from this graphic here that uh, around 1946, we had above 5.5 million hives, okay? Um, and then, you know, it's been steadily declining past 2006. Uh, and really a lot of this um, has been led to 
um, some of some key issues that uh, really we can change, but um, some of them have not uh, uh, been attributed by um, humankind. And so uh, really looking at those factors and where we can pivot and put our resources to to better support bees is really the question and the answer. Without bees, uh, our diets would mostly consist of corn, wheat, and rice. Um, and those are specifically because they are pollinated by the wind. You have um, some crops that are pollinated um, through pollinators like moths and bees and such, but also some by the wind. And 80% of crops are pollinated uh, through pollinators. And so without bees, uh, really entire food chains will be at risk because they're all linked to each other and um, each part of the ecosystem um, has its place for a reason. So this brings us to pollinator conscious nutrition, which you came here to learn about. And so uh, what we've just talked about in the previous slides really um, is to help you understand this model here. And so pollinator conscious nutrition is a region specific ecological approach um, to food nutrition and health. And uh, we say region specific is because one portion of this model is being able to use the ecological resources in your region. So us uh, being in Detroit uh, means that we can use the resources, the land resources um, of Detroit to be able to uh, help us with our mission. And so what that looks like, uh, Detroit uh, is home to over 15,000 acres of vacant land. That vacant land can be used to build these urban bee farms and, and hives and provide community engagement sites uh, where we can continue to educate on this mission. So that's part of the Detroit um, emphasis and how that folds into our model specifically in Detroit. Um, the other part is that you have the pollinators. Pollinators plus the resources of the land, so building these urban bee farms on these available lands allows us to be able to um, have a platform to grow and build this mission off of. And so I want to point out what this graphic looks like and some of the mechanisms in place here. Uh, so you have the yellow arrow um, that goes from pollinators to plants to people, which is showing the impact uh, and, and how this development of growth um, from the pollinators and the land resources um, is being able to impact um, other things within the ecosystem. So we're talking about the plants and then the people and that's um, the wild plant life growth helps with uh, food uh, security. And so we'll talk more about that in a second. The blue line here um, for the arrows going down is for the purpose. So uh, what is the real job of these mechanisms and, and what is it doing? And so pollinators plus the uh, resources and availability of the land in Detroit allows us to provide a platform for transformation. Um, with these things in place, we can then transform um, sort of the health settings and nutritional settings already in place in Detroit. And so we also know that Detroit is um, a food insecure region. And so being able to have an abundance of agricultural growth um, and having nutrients dense foods uh, and being available in various zip codes within the city uh, will help uh, be able to overturn some of that um, nutritional deficits that we see in some communities because there's more bioavailability of these materials and, and, and substantive foods. Uh, so then we talk about the transformation and what those transformation, those materials being brought together leads us to production, right? We're producing more plants or providing more biodiversity. Um, the ecosystem's feeling good. It's great. It's vibing. And then that leads us to once those things are available, uh, we can then consume them. And so um, that leads us to the other part, which is the method. And so we're looking at these, mecha these mechanisms here of the transformation production to access and consumption, but they all coincide to the purpose. And the purpose is from plants to production to people to consumption. And it's simple like that. Um, and, and, and sometimes we want to um, stress that, again, this is a region specific model. So for other environmental initiatives with dealing with poll pollinators in the various region, that region may provide another set of resources. And so really highlighting and being able to um, take advantage of the resources of whatever that region is to help with this pollinator mission is really gonna be the key. Um, and so this paragraph here is really just summing up why um, you know, the overall public health community should think uh, really more broadly about these effects here of, of 
pollinator dependence in various regions and how um, for shifting focus um, for you know more ecological approaches can give rise to more of our you know um, current chronic disease crises that we see every day and people live with um, on a daily basis. So looking at those links here and really creating um, a pipeline of how to be able to solve that through this model here. Is there any questions regarding this at all? Okay, good. Um, there certainly can be questions at the end, but I just want to stress um, the various parts within this model here. So how can you how you can help? Um, and that's really the question um, that some of you may ask. And it doesn't take you to be some public health expert or some you know famous and commercial farmer. Uh, it, it really is just you being able to be willing to understand and be able to support um, the environment. And that looks like partaking in urban gardening. Maybe um, if you're in the city, joining an organization that participates in this even in your own backyard, um, participate in urban gardening, as well as backyard beekeeping. Um, that's something that uh, people can really use on uh, uh, as, as a hobby and be able to um, use nutritional honey for um, themselves and their families. Um, and a lot of that has uh, been able to kind of help individuals um, during this time um, as a mental health factor and being able to participate in these activities. Uh, a lot of it has uh, been able to um, provide opportunities for people to get involved in policy. Um, and you know, people who are passionate about working at the policy level, speaking with lawmakers and such on environmental justice and sustainability issues to get things passed and done um, at um, that level and when which it trickles down into the local communities um, is really one way some people have gotten involved through that lobbying practices. Uh, another way is supporting missions like ours. And so what that looks like, either volunteering, promoting, donating, um, all these various things that you can do um, to help us increase our mission and empower more individuals like yourselves. Uh, educating your friends and family. Um, there's a typo there, <laughs> educate you. <laughs> but yeah, um, speaking to those individuals about these issues um, and really kind of dismantling a lot of the misconceptions around bees. You know, some people confuse bees with, you know, wasp and hornets and yellow jackets. Um, when there's really a, a key difference, uh, multiple key differences and being able to educate yourself on that and be able to provide that information to others, help spread the mission and the promotion that um, bees provide wonderful work for our communities and our overall public health. And below here are some of uh, the photos of, of us at our workshops or just together, um, you know, at informational sessions and some community volunteers. But uh, we're always welcomed uh, for people who want to support our mission, who want to volunteer, um, and really want to help out in any um, sh way, shape, or form. So, you know, uh, that's it. And you know, feel free to give us a buzz. <laughs> that means just contact us wherever you can. This is our website. Please check us out more um, for, for any other opportunities and volunteer updates that'll be posted on there. Um, and even some of our talks, um, including this one, uh, for any questions and concerns or um, just wanting to reach out and provide some outreach, um, that's our email there. And even follow us on social media. This is our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter handles. Um, and feel free to uh, reach out. Don't be afraid. And one thing I'll leave you with is that a world without bees would truly sting. So um, your efforts and um, your participation, even in this workshop discussion here, is really um, um, key to being able to help the bees and be able to provide more opportunities for um, environmental health. And if anything, I want you to take away from this presentation is that bees provide great things for the community. And what we're talking about of environmental health, environmental health is one of the things that helps us in our really daily lives. And so if you, if you have individuals or family members who suffer from chronic diseases or know um, regions who um, can't provide nutritional foods um, on their you know, dinner tables at night, um, a lot of that 
um, can be solved through the efforts of environmental health. So the more everyone can participate, the more everyone can empower, the more everyone can in get involved in these efforts and missions um, will provide a better future for us all. Okay, any questions? But yeah, Kamali, um, what year was the group founded again? Say that again, Nolan. What, a, what what year was the group founded in again? I think I missed that. Because I know you guys are relatively new, right? Yeah, uh, so we uh, were incorporated um, by the state of Michigan as a nonprofit back in early August, but the whole planning of uh, this culmination has started back in uh, September uh, 2019. And so um, ever since we've been growing and continuing uh, to move throughout the community and uh, become a more of a presence within Detroit. That's awesome. That's good to hear. I look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you, Nolan. Appreciate you. Anything else? All right. All right. Anything, my team? Anything you all want to mention? I think you covered it. You did a really good job. Yeah. Um, I think what I really admire about all of us is that we bring so many different things to the table. So that only works in our favor. Absolutely. Collectively towards the goal. So. It's also cool just starting out kind of like, I don't know, seeing how we can like keep working toward goals and like expanding and stuff like that. Like you really with us just being like, with it just being us, uh, there's a lot of like impact you can make as an individual in this group, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop sharing here or recording. <laughs>